Hello everyone, my name is Dilbak Dinsa. I work as AI lead in Insight Innovation Group. Today I am going to cover one interesting topic, AI and future of work. As we all know, over the years, AI has uh, progressed a lot and has been has made a steady progress over the years and helping Im improve productivity, efficiency and solve a lot of complex business problems that earlier required human involvement. In areas of computer vision, natural language processing, robotics, advanced analytics, among others. In computer vision, especially in uh, areas like quality inspection, uh, earlier people have to do it manually for any defects in the manufactured parts but now computer vision models can be trained and they can be deployed onto the edge device where it can just look at the manufactured component and identify if there is any defects existing on that product and can notify accordingly. Similarly for in logistics area computer vision can be used to uh, uh, identify whether the trailers are loaded or unloaded in right time so it can identify whether the trailer doors are opened or not open it can also identify whether the trailer is loaded or unloaded how much it is loaded or unloaded in terms of percentage in terms of natural language processing so lot of unstructured data lot of text data that was uh, available that was used to extract meaningful patterns out of uh, this uh, text data and to build a lot of uh, enterprise search engines similarly a lot of other uh, natural language processing applications were built similarly in advanced analytics recommendation engine forecasting applications are built using ai so over the years ai has been uh, used and it has started making our life easier and over the years what we have seen is uh, there is a explosion of data in uh, different forms like say it can be images text or it can be audio video and along with the uh, architecture and algorithm uh, latest uh, development and hardware in terms of gpu that has helped actually um, make a steady progress in AI. But after the research paper, attention is all you need. That is when it, it actually detailed out the transformer uh, architecture and that was a kind of starting point for the generative AI. And a uh, lot of progress has been made in generative AI area over the last couple of years. And that is, uh, is like say being noticed by uh, lot of people and with generative AI now it is generating uh, competent code it is producing uh, protein structure as well as the product strategies jotting down screenplays generating video playing music and all this it is doing at in a fraction of time as compared to a semi-competent professional uh, doing with the current tools it started with BERT, T5, BARD, LALMA and all this uh, algorithm but especially with the uh, uh, gpt 2 3 4 and chat gpt within uh, text area uh, especially that generated excitement and widespread awareness of ai in last couple of years and along with the text area we have a dale e stable diffusion mid journey which uh, works especially in the text to image generation area and now people are working to like say kind of merge these two things together uh, creating multi-model architecture where uh, these large language models can understand both text as well as the images so this is what would it, it is happening in generative ai it has got lot of applications that people are already seeing uh, would affect uh, all the different areas if we start with the in terms of media uh, in media it is going to help in the technical writing advertising content creation in legal industry it is going to create legal assistant that would help lawyers 
and then in education this is one of the most impacted area so uh, ai would act as a virtual teacher which for the students and it will give them all the uh, study material they will evaluate the students and they will uh, give guidance also to the students in healthcare area so it is uh, uh, generative ai has got a lot of application in drug discovery uh, like say disease diagnosis and medical imaging uh, clinical coding and uh, doing summarization of clinical consultation and besides this uh, especially in software engineering part where uh, like say github copilot kind of tools would be used uh, can be used to improve the productivity of the software developers and then some other area in terms of customer service agent so all this uh, there would be very few areas which will not have applications of generative ai and ai in general so most of the areas most of the industries would be impacted by uh, generative ai uh, in in uh, coming years actually so with ai impacting all the industries in area of work with rapid development of generative ai in coming years so we should embrace ai as a tool and broaden our thinking instead of just thinking that uh, it will just take away our job so more we will understand about ai and appreciate uh, how it is going to help us so more it will uh, help us to do our work better we should think about the ways ai can improve uh, the way we work and uh, make ourselves more productive every path breaking invention like generative ai will uh, brings excitement in equal measure as well as the fear in equal measure and uh, generative ai is uh, no different so ai will help generate new jobs and and power the uh, existing job sector training reskilling and upskilling so all this uh, things need to be done uh, for our workforce to learn ai and that is the uh, way to go going forward at the same time we should be aware of the limitations of generative ai uh, which industry is trying to address first being is like say hallucination in which when we ask someone uh, to generate a ai or gpt models so even if it doesn't know it will just try to make up some answer and uh, give those uh, share those answer with us so these uh, things are trying to be uh, like say address another issue uh, with generative ai is kind of uh, issue with the privacy and plagiarism which all the industry leaders are trying to address uh, using uh, ways like watermarking metadata so using this we will be able to identify whether a particular artifact is generated using generative ai or not so this will help uh, kind of reduce plagiarism uh, and uh, man- maintain privacy and another important issue is responsible ai so even because we generative ai this is a uh, lot of uh, uh, doubts uh, and fear in uh, people's mind that it will uh, have issues in terms of uh, excluding people having some biases so in this uh, uh, microsoft is already working and all other leaders in generative ai are also working just to ensure that uh, Uh, generative ai is compliant with all the uh, responsible ai principles of fairness no bias inclusiveness security transparency all this uh, should be compliant and microsoft is also bringing in checks and balances uh, in uh, all the generative ai models that are deployed in uh, in azure just to ensure that they are compliant with the responsible ai principle and they they have uh, brought in guardrails to ensure that there are no offensive output generated by uh, all the generative ai models so ai has changed the way we work and it will continue to uh, impact uh, all different areas in uh, different areas of our work and we what we need to do is like say we need to learn ai and uh, embrace like say what all changes are coming in and uh, because this will help us improve our productivity help us uh, bring in new ways to work uh, for the ai and uh, 
In last, I would say that people say that AI, AI will take our job, but there is a saying that AI will not take our job, but someone using AI will can take our job. So it is better that we should learn AI, all the different aspects of AI, and ensure that we become more productivity, more productive uh, by using the AI. Thank you very much. Ta-da.